Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And today we've got with us here Shasta Marina. Shasta's gonna help us take a look at the Sigma FP versus the Panasonic S1H. So a special thanks here to Sammy's who provide the lenses for us for this review. Thank you very much to Sammy's camera, which has been a great support here at the Silent Lens. And coast to coast. We also want to thank BNH Photo and Video. They provided the cameras for this lesson, which was really great. Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of these things and they pull through in a, in a country. So today we really want to look at the video with these two cameras because that's the market that they're both aimed towards. Uh, the F, uh, FP is really a small compact camera, it's going to be great for gimbals, it's going to be great for getting those tight shots, but with an excellent uh, export. The Panasonic is definitely more aimed at a broad range of uses, it has more a uh, stronger feature set, I think you can do more frame rates, um, it has all sorts of different picture profiles. I mean the S1H, it was the first camera to offer um, 6K full frame capabilities in a stills body. It shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. So it packs a really heavy punch, and in, again, in some of those ways, the Sigma isn't as strong a contender, but the Sigma shoots raw, which is amazing. And it's so tiny, such a compact form factor. So I'm very interested to see how it shakes out. That compact form factor, and like you say, it's very module, and that is that you really don't get a lot with this little pack package here. If you want any kind of an EVF, if you want to add things onto it, you can, and they have adapters to be able to make that happen, but it really comes pretty stripped down, and the price is stripped down as well, Yeah. Uh, whereas the, the S1H the price. is not stripped down price-wise. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at these two cameras and take a look at our image quality test in video. Here we go. So we're starting out here in log. Now this is Panasonic's V-Log, which is kind of the strong suit of the S1H, is it has the same V-Log color profile that their cinema cameras have, which makes it a great sort of B-cam for those. Oh, wow. And then we have That's the LUT. so spectacular. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. It just looks so rich. Look how red the red is, man. Yeah. And just, her skin, though, looks very good to me. I don't yeah. feel a lot of red. I see a little bit of red in the corner of her forehead there. Mm -hmm. A little bit in the shadows, but that, mm -hmm. but, uh, boy, the color looks beautiful there. Yeah, I like, Holding you highlights. know, there's a lot of separation in the greens in the background, which is nice. The red pops, the blue in her jeans pops, the skin, t the skin tone is nice and neutral. Now the Sigma doesn't have a log profile, it's raw, so the Cinema DNGs just come out with the sort of default gamma that they already have. It's a little hot in the skin, and I kind of wanted to match it a little better to the Panasonic. I actually kind of matched them together a little bit, so I brought the highlights down a little bit, just made it a little less punchy and contrasty. What I like about the Sigma is that it has a little more subtlety with the red in her shirt. Mm -hmm. I felt like in real life it wasn't quite as strong of a primary red as you had with the uh, Panasonic. I think the Sigma feels like it has a little more color in her skin, whereas the Panasonic is a little bit more neutral. I do notice a little bit more A in her shirt on the Sigma. Oh, you do. It every time she moves. Every, yeah, every, every time she moves, yeah. Now we're gonna do the dynamic range test. The way we usually do this is we set a base exposure that's properly properly lit, properly exposed according to a light meter, and then we'll overexpose by four stops and underexpose by four stops, and in post we'll try and correct the footage and see how much information we're getting, how much detail we can hold on to in the highlights and the shadows with uh, the pushing and pulling of the footage. We did shoot these at two different ISOs. The native ISO for the, the Panasonic is 640. That's as low as you can go in B-Log. And then the native ISO for the Sigma is 100. Um, and now we, we did expose for her face with a light meter, so her face is properly exposed with a light meter. Whoa, when we jump one stop, plus one, the Sigma already has got major problems with the skin tone. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, that was huge. I was curious how the raw files would deal, but they just, the highlights instantly clip, immediately. Even her face, at oh, one stop over, completely. it's already losing detail. Whereas we see no change in the Panasonic. The Panasonic looks like it's almost the same clip. All at the way two through. stops. <laughs> so we're at, we're at plus two stops here, and the Panasonic is still holding extremely well, but now we've already lost the Sigma. It's, it's yeah. unusable already. It really is in the high. Look at the background. Yeah, we have so much gone. detail on the left. It's starting to posterize already. I'll bet this Sigma likes to be underexposed, I not overexposed. So we're probably going to see it on the other thing. end. Yeah. I, exactly, I think so. Uh, at plus three stops, the Panasonic finally clips in the tree. There's a tree, yeah. Mm -hmm. But her face is still just fine. Yep. Which but is that makes really sense because the, the face is in the shade. The yeah. Sigma surprised me because the, the face was in the shade. That would have been in the last still, place yeah. I thought would have yeah. lost, you know? I mean, that kind of just tells me that anything that's overexposed in your image is going to clip in the Sigma. Yeah. Look at four stops. 
the four stops, the Panasonic is still think just I've ever fine. Seen it's amazing. Anything this you, in the scopes on Da Vinci, like you did start to lose a little bit of detail here in, in her face, or like a couple parts, these chips and stuff were starting to clip a little bit. But four stops, yeah, it's still doing great. It's amazing. That is crazy. So let's see what happens when we go to the underexposure. Got the EV minus one. Both looking pretty good at minus one. So there's minus two EV. I feel like the Panasonic's desaturating in the skin a little bit. Mm-hmm, it is. And I feel the green creeping in. Yeah, for sure. I definitely do. That Sigma's got beautiful wow. skin tone. Even look at minus, minus three. three. Beautiful skin tone. Whereas the Panasonic is, she's gone very green. And you're seeing a lot of noise. Yeah. In the shadows too. Minus three. Look at the noise in, in the red. In the reds on her shirt. Panasonic is it's terrible. Crazy. The Sigma's so the holding Sigma's super well. So the Sigma is reacting exactly the way you would expect a raw image to act, a still image to act. Yeah. Yeah. It does not like to be overexposed at all. It holds much better being underexposed. Mm -hmm. Very well. And that's well. exactly what the Sigma is doing. So its its strength is in underexposing, yeah. whereas the Panasonic is much happier being overexposed. And in minus four stops, the Sigma is still usable. Yeah, Totally completely. usable. I mean, you are starting, you do start to see a little bit of noise in the shadows here. Oh yeah. On the Sigma, especially her red shirt and stuff. So, so that's an issue. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expose it minus four stops, but you know maybe minus two. Well, let's go into the ISO test because okay. that's that's the next thing. If you're going to be shooting in a dark alley, if you're shooting in a dark <laughs> alley, which we do often, actually, <laughs> often. <laughs> uh, so we're starting here at 100 ISO with the Sigma. The Sigma is the only one that can do that, and it's just super clean, super nice. I love the color on this camera. I, it's I do too. Really, really. Look at good the reds. They color. just feel correct. So look at the color chart. The spider checker. I mean, the colors just look beautiful all the way around. 200 ISO looking great. Okay. Okay. This one's a little bit of a mismatch. We have 640 on the S1H because that's the lowest it can go. And then we did 400 on the uh, FP because that was kind of the next step up. They're both looking really good at this ISO. I don't really see any noise. But I've... look at the moray pattern on the front of her shirt again. Yeah, you do have that mm -hmm. with the FP. All right, here we are, 800 yeah, ISO. So now they're kind of on the same page here. They're at 800 ISO. I'm... Look at the, look at the, we're starting to see some, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm noticing a little bit of flicker almost. Well, like a little bit of Sigma. dancing even on the her forehead. At 1600 ISO, they both look pretty clean, but you do see some noise off of her right arm in the Sigma. Just in that, Just that a darker little shadows bit in the, the background. darker yeah. shadows, yeah. Still really clean for this ISO for, for both 1600, cameras. For 1600, yeah. Yeah, 3200 ISO, you really start to see that noise come out. It's coming out in all of these color check yeah, checker squares. You're not seeing it as much. I do see some noise in the S1H, but not as much. Okay, here's 6400 ISO. That Sigma's getting really noisy. Really noisy. Look at her shirt. Well, the uh, Panasonic's getting fairly noisy as well. You see the, the grain and... Yeah, the Panasonic, you do have some noise. Again, it's not as much. It's kind of like the other test we did with the Panasonic. 12,800, super, super noisy. Both of these are getting kind of noisy. I, I don't think yeah. I would shoot this high unless I had a gun in my head, you know? Yeah. But the Sigma's definitely losing. Having said that, though, the color looks really good still. Still looks fabulous. That raw. Well, both of them still look pretty good. There you 25,600. Go. Yeah, I mean, look at how green the Panasonic Whoa. goes all of a sudden just phew. And yeah. the Sigma's still, the color looks amazing. I mean, it's noisy, 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 but. But the color has held. The color has held. So, I, I mean, ISO wise, they both look really good. I feel like the Panasonic was cleaner all the way through, uh, though the Sigma's color did hold up longer. So here's our mixed lighting test. We've got the light set at 3200 degrees, the camera's at 3600 degrees, and of course you've got sunlight coming in uh, the window in the back, and that sunlight's going to go very blue with that camera setting, uh, that white balance setting. So let's take a look at that. It's a very popular way to shoot, to be able to mix light, mix colors. Let's just see how these sensors handle that mixed light situation and just how they grade out. So let's take a look. I, I think there's just nice, nice color separation, nice tonality. And you know, with both these cameras, the footage is so malleable. There's so much information there. You can really push and pull a lot of different ways. We're seeing a lot of detail in the background, even though there's pretty mm -hmm. deep shadows back under the cabinets in the background. Mm -hmm. Boy, the Sigma's a lot more crunchy. It just seems like the blacks and the shadows are just a lot. Look at this background. There's You've this lost a lot of detail there's this back there. Flickering going on. Is it? So if you look in, if you look in the background here, I, I mentioned it when we were doing the ISO test. But with the Sigma, there's this sort of flickering going on, and you see it more in the shadows, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I noticed that when we were shooting on the screen, I saw flickering on the screen, but I didn't know it was, I thought it was just like a, like a setting for the LCD or something, but it's definitely in the footage. And uh, I guess other people have experienced the same thing where the footage of the cinema DNG sequence flickers. It has inconsistent yeah. exposures. Yeah, I mean, I think they both, the, I'm actually amazed at how similar they are in terms of how they mix the light and the warm and the cool and stuff. But yeah, the out of the box, the Sigma is definitely more contrasty. Yeah. And you definitely. have to kind of pull it back maybe a little more than I did. That flickering issue is really strange. That's though. a real issue. That's a real issue. Uh, I didn't notice it so much outside. I don't know why the outdoor stuff didn't seem Well, we didn't have as deeper shadows yeah, out there. I guess we're that's really true. looking at deeper shadows because you saw it on the ISO, we saw yeah. it on the uh, in the kitchen there where it had deeper shadows in the background. So uh, it just seems to be a problem in the deep shadows. So let's talk about ergonomics. <laughs> You know, the first thing I have to say it, and we said it when we talked about a steel camera, is I can't, I can't grip this thing. I got to yeah. buy a battery grip for it because I just I don't feel comfortable on any level holding it. And whereas I feel like this, I pick up just the way I pick up every camera I've ever yeah. held. I feel comfortable with my hands, my fingers grab around it, and yeah. just. But this is a beast, man. This is so much smaller and and so much lighter and easier to use. Well, I don't know about easier to use. The menus on the back were pretty difficult to get in. To, to, you had to go in to a touchscreen menu for everything you wanted to do. I was very puzzled, and we couldn't. Maybe there's a setting we missed, but I could not for the life of me figure out how to get this scroll wheel on the front to change the aperture of the Sigma lens we were using. In, without, cine, in cine, in the cine. yeah, without even in even in stills, I had the yeah. same issue. Without going into a menu and pushing a button, it doesn't make sense. You should be able to just turn this and it changed something. I liked when it was first announced, I liked the idea of it being a little run and gun travel camera and stuff. I think I agree with you, it's just too hard to handle. Way too hard to handle. Well, and I'm, I'm not a fan on any level, even for a run and gun, take it on vacation mm -hmm. kind of thing, of a video, a camera that doesn't have some kind of EVF. Oh yeah, yeah. This, I mean, I will say, it was very easy to pull focus on this. The magnification is very sharp. Is yeah. The picture is very clear. It has good color. It's sharp. I like that aspect. But it's you know in the sunlight, it's a giant mirror. So yeah, it was easier to focus on the Sigma than it was on the Panasonic. Yeah, I it found was, that fascinating. Yeah. yeah, I did too. But I'm with you. I actually, honestly, I and I am a little biased. I do own one of these, and I've actually loved shooting on this because I feel like it has everything you need built in. It has the EVF, the articulable screen. It's hef hefty enough that it has real weight, it has great stabilization, the grip is comfortable. It's just so easy to shoot with. Even if it's a little bit heavy, I think all of the features that come with it make it a pleasure, a pleasure to handle. This, this does have a mic input, a little mic jack. It doesn't have uh, an audio output, no. which is weird. There's no place for headphones, which makes it almost totally useless. Um, Actually, I think it hear. makes it totally useless. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a B camera. If you want to get those B roll yeah. shots, the gimbal shots, you want to get the camera in the corner inside a mailbox, you know, all those kinds mm -hmm. of things, it's great for that. But uh, as far it's, as a, a really solid video camera, run and gun video camera, it's just you'd have to add a lot of things onto it's it. It's really strange. It's a really strange camera. Anyways, I that was a super interesting test. I'm it was. really excited we did it. I, I honestly feel like the Sigma lost in so many ways, <laughs> but it had a beautiful image when it was at its peak, and I think that I, their next cameras should be good, I hope. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review. Make sure you subscribe. Be a supporter here at The Slant and Lens. Be a part of everything we have going on. We have more of this uh, type of content coming, so make sure you get those notifications when it comes out. So thanks for your input. We'll try to answer all your comments. So let's see what you got to, to offer us. So keep those cameras going. And keep on clicking.